So I decided to purchase my new fuel pressure regulator inside Australia at enormous expense. Uh, worked out to over 500 Australian dollars to buy it here. I am aware that you could buy it particularly in the US for 300 and something dollars but I just decided to do the right thing and pay my fair share of tax. So this is the correct Bosch unit for the CIS M104 engine. It is worth noting that the M103 and M102 engines run at a different pressure, so you can't use the same fuel pressure regulator on this engine. Unfortunately, this is also the most expensive type. I believe it's also shared with the M119 CIS engines, so that's probably why it's a bit rich. Anyway, let's get started on installing this and see if it makes any difference whatsoever. First thing I do whenever playing with the fuel system is depressurize the fuel tank because if you don't do this you're going to have fuel going absolutely everywhere even from the return line when you disconnect it. Removal is not rocket science. You've only got three connections to disconnect. Um, don't give me a hard time about not counter holding the connections because I really don't care. This is my car and my money. I'll do it however the hell I like. And this is how I like doing it. When dealing with the high pressure side, you'll want to have some kind of absorbent material around because there is going to be fuel flowing and you really don't want that going everywhere. I probably should have been wearing gloves. No, I really should have been wearing gloves because you don't want fuel to be absorbing through your skin. But once again, I don't give a shit. This is how I do it. You will make life easier by loosening the other connection on this top high pressure line because it'll allow you to swivel it out of the way and give you a lot more room to work with. You could just remove it completely but it's not 100% necessary. On to the final connection now and yes I did actually counter hold it this time. The actual uh, regulator itself you can hold that with a 10 millimeter wrench and the line that is screwed into it is 12 millimeters just one bolt is required to hold this thing down uh, it's pretty rigid with the fuel lines anyway this is just an extra measure I guess uh, it's 10 millimeters. Uh, it's clamping down on a saddle. You don't have to remove it the whole way. Once you've got all of the lines loosened, or removed I should say, uh, you loosen this saddle and you can just slide this regulator out quite easily.
This is just a quick look at the old unit. As you can see, the vent line is actually snapped off completely and someone had installed a windscreen washer uh, fitting in there and connected it to a rubber hose instead of the original vacuum style hose that goes up to the crankcase ventilation hose. It is not a vacuum line, it is a vent line. It's now time to get this new regulator installed. It genuinely is a case of assembly is a reversal of disassembly. It's very straightforward. For some unknown reason, I couldn't find a single piece of MB vacuum line in my entire collection of everything. It was probably partly to do with breathing in fuel vapours uh, and my brain not functioning properly, but I didn't want to waste any more time so I just reinstalled that uh, crappy makeshift rubber hose that someone had installed in the past. 
I will rectify that at a later date, but it does not affect the operation of the vehicle in any way. It is just a vent, and it is for somewhere for the uh, fuel to leak. If the diaphragm ruptures in the regulator, it will safely go inside the air filter housing or inside the engine. It is not a vacuum line. Once everything is connected up, the first thing I like to do is just a leak test. So I run the pump a few times and just check for leaks. Once there's no leaks, I know it's safe to put the air filter housing back on and then proceed with the duty cycle adjustment. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we want to make sure that this enormously expensive item is actually achieving something. So we want to check the system pressure. Now, I don't give a damn about the control pressure. I've already tested that and that's fine. I just want to see if the system pressure is now within specification, which once again is 6.2 to 6.4 bar before it was running at 6.7 and that was completely out of specification and I believe the cause of my engine running lean and not being very exciting to drive. So let's give it a go. After assembling the engine back to its normal uh, operating condition, this time making sure the air conditioner isn't on, because I made that mistake in the past, I proceeded with the duty cycle adjustment. Now it was quite far off, uh, but unfortunately I screwed up recording it and you can't see it. Uh, this is after me screwing around with it for some time, so this isn't 100% accurate, but yeah. This is how I adjusted it in the end. I like it to oscillate around 50% to 
just under and just over as you'll see here. Now I am pleased to report the car has been transformed as far as part throttle responsiveness is concerned. Just driving around doing the speed limit, this engine wants to scream all the way up to and beyond the legal speed limit, so it is quite fun to drive now. I believe I have solved the mid-range and bottom uh, responsiveness. I can't say 100% for wide open throttle. I think it might have shaved some time off, but I really need to test it properly. This attempt I did here is not the best, and uh, I don't think it should really be considered a valid test. I will do it better, probably on the weekend, if I have a chance. <laughs> 